Hello everyone. Hope every everybody's fine. Sorry about the the sound. My son is here. Um, amazed with Batman and other stuff. But I'm really glad to be here to present this last session on Bariloche Room. Uh, please have your seat. We are about to start. The, um, I would like to before present our speakers to ask you if you have any questions or even if it's a comment that you believe that would be important to, to have uh, me presenting or, or saying to, to the speakers, please do so in the questions tab you have on the right side of, of this session. So first of uh, presentation here, we will have Tom Kralidis. Sorry, Tom, I, I tried to, <laughs> I asked it before, but didn't, uh, didn't come. Uh, be welcome, Tom. I uh, hope you are fine if I call you just Tom. Be welcome. Uh, Tom will uh, present us about uh, introducing Pi, Pi Geo Meta, meta mit, metadata creation for the rest of us. I'm really interested on your presentation. And so, all yours, I will put your presentation here. Be welcome, Tom. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, so thanks everyone for uh, for attending the talk. Today I will discuss uh, the PyGeo Meta project, which is uh, basically metadata, metadata creation for the rest of us. Um, the project has been around for a few years, but this is a, its sort of first appearance at a Phosphor G event uh, and our and our first presentation. So it's the right time to uh, discuss uh, metadata and uh, and Python. And here we are. So I will talk, talk a little bit about the geospatial metadata e ecosystem and, and some, of, uh, some of the standards associated with metadata as well. I will, uh, I'll, then I'll start with an overview of, uh, of PyGeoMeta itself and talk about uh, you know, where it came from, some of, the, uh, uh, some of the goals of the project as well. I'll go into uh, specific examples of how it's been implemented in, uh, in, a, in a couple of different projects uh, so far. Then I'll uh, look at the future work. So geospatial metadata. Um, so if you don't recognize the uh, picture, that's Arnav Crystal. He's a, a long time contributor to OSGEO, uh, past president as well. So uh, he's, uh, and he's also very big on metadata. So I always like including a picture of Arnav when we talk about uh, metadata and open source. So wh wh what is geospatial metadata? It's basically data about data. I mean, that's what metadata is. It describes the the who, the what, the where, the when, um, as well as uh, uh, you know sometimes the how. Um, so this includes things like attribution. You know who's the who is the contact person for the metadata? Who is the principal investigator who created that data? Um, what is that data about? What are the spatial temporal extents of the data? Is it real time data? Is it archive data? Um, and uh, and and so on. So. It's basically documenting your data set. So we put a lot of work into generating uh, generating geospatial data, GIS data. Uh, part of that work also needs to be the actual documentation and preservation of it. So if, uh, if you do not have good metadata, people will never discover your data properly and uh, it will never be cataloged correctly in, in terms of uh, making it available to search engines or search or catalog APIs. The best search engines or catalogs will never, uh, will never be able to substitute um, good metadata. So it's an important component of, of, uh, of the discovery chain and, and basically documenting your data assets over time as you know, people and projects come and go. Geospatial metadata concepts. So uh, it, GIS metadata has been around for quite a long time. Uh, we have the idea of metadata models. So those are typically conceptual models that are that are made at the in standards organizations. And I'll talk a little bit about to that 
uh, you know, a little bit later, but we have these logical models that have been that have been developed over time for all sorts of different uh, metadata workflows and use cases. Um, those logical models typically end up being schemas. Uh, traditionally, they've been XML schemas or DTDs, uh, document type definitions. Now I'm showing my age, but uh, we're increasingly seeing JSON schemas around that. And that is basically what the rules are around what's required for a specific metadata model, what's optional, what's conditional, and, uh, and so on. Uh, from from there, we you know we have the standards and, and and sometimes profiles, which means we have metadata standards, which are typically very generic. Uh, and then what we what we typically see is an information community put a profile on top of that standard. So, for example, in, in my community, which is the the UN uh, World Meteorological Organization community, we have a WMO we have a WMO metadata profile on top of uh, on top of an ISO metadata standard. These things also, uh, metadata is also very much tied to controlled vocabularies or pick lists so that we can uh, be able to uh, discover, discover things uh, properly for our, for our information community or our, uh, or our users, as well as uh, the representation. So, you know, is it, is it XML metadata? Is it JSON metadata? Is it a plain text? Like the actual encoding and the container, if you will. All of that uh, is, is very important but uh, uh, of key importance is quality. So like I said before, uh, metadata needs work, and that includes having you know, properly curated uh, titles, abstracts, keywords, uh, contact information, and so on. That includes also a maintenance, uh, a, a, a maintenance task as well. So you need, to, uh, you need to be able to have quality. So having, having a metadata with a title, which is just an acronym and nothing else, which maybe came from some automated program, which picked up the uh, field from the file name of, uh, of the actual data set, that becomes its title, that doesn't really help. So we, we, we wanna pay attention to having quality metadata to make that available. So that's independent of any technology or any standard. Uh, and that's really an organizational sort of um, this good, uh, decision and responsibility to make your metadata as, uh, as, as descriptive as possible. Now we get into you know standards specifically around around metadata. So this is my favorite sort of uh, uh, XKCD uh, image um, where we have uh, so many competing standards and you know hey let's let's create another one. Metadata is no exception to this uh, to this rule. Um, in the geospatial realm, we've done metadata for decades uh, with a lot of uh, uh, various standards. So you can see the Federal Geo Geographic uh, Data Committee in the U.S. had something called the uh, Content Standard on Geospatial Metadata that got supersede, superseded by the uh, ISO 19115 slash 139 uh, efforts. NASA has had the directory interchange formats and continues to support that. Uh, back into ISO, we have a number of different profiles. So I mentioned the WMO profile as well here in Canada, or here in North America, we have a North American profile. And then in Can in uh, uh, in Canada, we have what's called the Harmonized North American Profile for, for Canadian requirements. So you can see levels and levels and levels of different uh, uh, specializations on these metadata standards to be able to interoperate within, the, within and across communities. Dublin Core, the 16 core elements, is no exception to, uh, to the metadata story. That's not necessarily a geospatial metadata standard, but it's a core metadata standard that's been around uh, uh, for, for, for quite some time. More recently, we've seen things like uh, DCAT and the W3C efforts. There's also, I think, a Geo DCAT application profile coming out of Europe uh, as well. Uh, much more recently in the OGC. So some of you who may have seen some of the talks around OGC API earlier in the week, um, catalog and metadata is no exception to this. So in the OGC API record standard, which will be the successor to the OGC CSW standard, there, uh, there is a record metadata, a metadata record model that is uh, that is being put forth as part of the standard. And well, as well, for those that are inter interested in spatial temporal asset catalog or stack, they are coming up with their own metadata model, which is uh, going to uh, plug and play and delve well with OGC API records, just the same. A lot going on, and a lot of different metadata standards that uh, that we need to pay pay attention to. 
what are some of the challenges? Obviously, all those standards and the different uh, the different formats that's a challenge, and making sure that we're we need to provide you know various vetted formats to various activities. So, for example, here in Canada, uh, we have to provide metadata in uh, one specific ISO profile for our open data requirements, but for our uh, UN World Meteorological Organization requirements, we have to provide that metadata in a different ISO profile. So we have to sort of um, provide the same core metadata that we manage inside in uh, different formats and different flavors according to according to the activity. More challenges, uh, granularity. So one person's uh, data is another person's metadata and vice, and vice versa. Uh, you, you know, organizations need to have typically what we call a knowledge organization system, um, which, which basically lets us, lets us organize all of, our, all of our data. So here in the weather community, we have metadata around absolutely everything, whether it's traditional metadata or discovery metadata. Uh, we also have station metadata. So imagine monitoring stations. We also have observation metadata, which is the observations coming from those stations. Well, they have metadata as well. In the, in the earth observation community, we have uh, a number of different metadata uh, approaches. There's ISO 19115-2, which is specifically around uh, uh, gridded metadata and acquisitions. Uh, there's no shortage of you know a collection level metadata, sensor metadata, acquisition metadata, as well as the actual product metadata around those. And then on top of that, let's let's lay on the metadata that we typically do for services themselves or even processes. Um, so we can have metadata about absolutely anything. And these, uh, there's tons of metadata, tons of different types of metadata, tons of standards. And we also have the maintenance burden uh, uh, and frequency uh, effort that we, need to, that we need to put forth. So this is quite a big piece of work, as you can imagine, uh, putting, trying to make sense of all these things and making sure uh, uh, you know, we cover all the metadata requirements specifically. For anybody in the crowd that's worked with metadata, I'm sure you've made, uh, you know, one or two crosswalks in your metadata life. And I can, I can, you know, I have nightmares about spreadsheets at night from, from one metadata standard to another and how things map together and cardinality and all these things. Fun stuff. So because of the recent data explosions, uh, we also have metadata explosions. Uh, in the past, we've had static discovery metadata as being, uh, you know, as being uh, key. Uh, but we're also seeing a lot of a lot more real-time metadata workflow. So for momentum data, which is for data which has a certain uh, lifespan that, that goes out onto the wire, well, that needs to be packaged with a little bit of metadata to give it some uh, to give it some context. So a lot more things on the fly, uh, which we're shipping with our data or or not. And this goes on top of the you know the traditional uh, metadata workflows that we've seen. So hey, say hello to Pi Geometa. Uh, this was the project was initially created in uh, 2009. It was called Pi, G, Pi GDM as part of some internal work uh, done at Environment Canada around geospatial data management. So it was a little bit more tied back then to uh, to the actual data assets that we had uh, on on disk. Uh, in 2014. Um, we, we pulled out part of that project and we called it PyGeometa, which is uh, specifically, to, uh, uh, specifically to metadata. And then finally, in 2015, we published it to, uh, uh, to GitHub so that uh, uh, it can be made available in the public and we can be more collaborative with, uh, uh, with users or others who might need the same kind of functionality. The original focus of the project was on uh, discovery metadata. So our, our original support was for uh, ISO 19115. Now it's sort of uh, uh, exploded into a number of other uh, metadata formats, both XML-based form formats or, or JSON-based formats, if, uh, if, if that's what you prefer. Um, there's an increased focus with this project on automated workflow. So you can run uh, PyGeometa on the command line to basically, you know, uh, take uh, take your metadata and create it into this into uh, take a configuration file, which I'll talk to a little later, um, and turn it into a metadata a format of your of your choosing. Or if you're a Py if you're a Python developer, you can integrate the the PyGeo Py API PyGeo Meta. So many PyGeo projects 
the PyGeo Meta uh, API uh, into your own Python workflow that will allow you to, again, do these, uh, these real-time pipelines. Uh, we also support, again, we support additional metadata formats. We do multilingual support. So the way PyGeo Meta works is with a, a simple YAML-based uh, configuration. And uh, that allows for either unilingual support, which is one language, or multilingual support, which is uh, uh, two or more languages. And that, that goes to infinity or as many languages as you want to, uh, as you want to support. So we have a, a mechanism to do that. We have a support. We have support for uh, base or uh, or for base uh, metadata control files or reuse. So let's say you have uh, four thousand metadata records, and the contact uh, person for those each of those metadata records is identical. Well, you don't want to. We don't want to duplicate them and copy and paste them all over these different uh, metadata configuration files, which is what we use in PyTube Meta underneath, uh, which I'll get into a little later. There. Uh, they're, they're allowed, we allow for basically a, a base or an inclusion mechanism to be able to specify that contact metadata once and then make it available across all of your you know, 4,000 metadata records. Then if you have to make a change, you make that change once to that contact metadata, and then that gets propagated throughout the other metadata documents. This mechanism is not only for context, contacts. It also exists for uh, distribution links, uh, uh, data identification, spatial representation, whatever you wish. So it's a, it's a totally open and reusable kind of uh, construct that we, principle that we have in the project. We've recently introduced schema validation. So now you can test a PyGeo Meta uh, uh, metadata file, which is just a, a piece of YAML, and uh, you can run it uh, and, and see if it's valid. And if it's valid there, then it's able to make its way out to any, any sort of metadata format that you wish. And it's extensible, so you can add, you can add your own metadata formats, which uh, may or may not be supported. Supported, and you can also propose them to as inclusion into the project. So, given that we're uh, they're operating everything on GitHub and we're free and open source and all that. Again, the basic architecture is we have MCFs, which we're calling metadata control files. So these are basically YAML files. Um, they used to be the 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 MCFs used to be an INI, a Windows uh, uh, INI file format, but we needed some more nesting. So we moved to YAML a couple of years ago. So MCFs are basically YAML files, which with uh, you know very agnostic, not specific to ISO or any other standard, but very agnostic uh, uh, metadata constructs. So if you know YAML, then it's pretty easy to create metadata. And then it run, we run that YAML through this uh, PyGeo Meta core, and you end up with uh, your metadata document. There's the heart of this uh, metadata control file. So you can see it's simple YAML with sections. So we, we see here an identification section. I'm also highlighting the fact that we can do multilingual in, uh, in, uh, in these MCF files, as well as uh, you know, we have versions. So as we move forward with different versions of the, F, of the MCF uh, format, then those can work as well. The MCF is a PyGeo Meta specific thing. It's not a, an international standard by any means or a formal metadata standard. It is an, it's local to the PyGeo Meta tooling to be able to be uh, uh, agnostic um, across all the different metadata standards. So the idea here is it's an abstraction and you can import or, or you can export to any metadata uh, format that you, uh, that you wish as a result. Supported output formats. We support uh, the ISO 19115 slash 139 standards. We recently added support for 19115-2. Uh, we support the WMO core metadata profile. And we've also recently added API records as well as uh, uh, there's some DCAT support there as well, which I think was contributed by GeoCAT. So appreciative for that. We also support Stack. And for those that are involved in, uh, in uh, WMO activities, we support the White House metadata standard. So a lot of action on, extent, on extending the project with different standards in the last, I would say, 18 months or so. How do you do extensibility? You can extend uh, uh, in your, in your in, you can write your own extension, uh, which would be extending uh, you know, a, a specific class, and then everything is encapsulated. So you basically come up with that logic inside to come up with your output metadata format. It can be in any format uh, uh, you wish and uh, you make that available. So it's a very, uh, uh, there's a there's a plugin mechanism to the project 
and you'll be able to, if you have your own metadata format, output something accordingly. Example implementations. So in the in the in the Meteorological Service of Canada, where I am, we've used this for the uh, the WMO information system. So there is a uh, 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 an infrastructure in WMO for data sharing called WIS, uh, which uh, which requires an ISO profile of uh, of of metadata, and we make this discover. We make we use PyGeoMeta to create our discovery metadata records, uh, put them into our catalog, and make them available to uh, to the infrastructure. We also use it as part of the uh, uh, the observing uh, uh, the observing station metadata for 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 WMO. They're, they have a system called Oscar, and they require uh, activities who uh, uh, monitor they who have monitoring activities to submit their station metadata. So we use Paizu Meta to in real time uh, set up our YGOS metadata, and send, we have a pipeline to send it over to uh, um, to to the WMO Oscar system. Here's our workflow for Canadian Weather Service. So we have stewards. They uh, they basically update these YAMLs. We create uh, the output uh, metadata with PyGeoMeta. This goes into a catalog. In our case, PyCSW is the catalog, and we make that available through uh, uh, to the WMO information system. Same kind of workflow for our station metadata. Again, this is uh, the managed upstream. We create the metadata. Uh, all in memory. We don't put anything on disk, and that's done all in uh, as a stream, as a pipeline, and it's sent over to WMO in real time. And these are uh, these are mission critical capabilities that uh, and operational services that we're using PyGeoMeta for. In the there's a project. There's also a project called the Earth Observation Exploitation Platform Common Architecture or EOEPCA that has a, a, a focus on, uh, on, uh, on on making EO data and pipelines uh, available for. For, uh, for EO data. The, there's a resource catalog component, which allows for metadata publishing. So we publish, uh, uh, the project publishes collection level, product level, even processes uh, metadata. So what, so what happens here is uh, uh, there's some metadata that gets into the uh, data or, or products or processes that, that get into the EO the system. And the uh, PyGeoMeta is used um, uh, dynamically and, in, and sort of at runtime to create ISO metadata and it publishes it into, in this case, PyCSW to provide CSW and uh, OGC API records and stack. There's a high level of view of the actual project. I won't get into the details there, but you can see there's a lot going on. And at the top uh, kind of left to center, you'll see the resource catalog, which is where a lot of the metadata uh, uh, capability is, uh, is resident. Here's what actually happens. So what I described before, we have uh, various types of metadata. We send them, uh, we send them into PyGeoMeta, and then that's uh, ISO documents are be, are be are made available into the catalog. So uh, it's very easy for us to, if we ever had to switch to Stack, let's say, then PyGeoMeta we can just switch that part of the code into Stack or OTC API records, and those can be outputted just the same. So the idea is. That's uh, PyGeoMeta is the pipeline for this project to take in all sorts of different uh, upstream metadata, create the metadata required for uh, for what's required in EOEPCA, and make that available through uh, a metadata catalog, which in this case is PyCSW. Future work, obviously, we want to better support the additional formats. We also want to support stack extensions. So there's been some work on stack, but it's the it's the sort of vanilla or generic view of stack, and we also want to support um, uh, more import mechanisms. So all the workflows that I've talked about previously during this talk have been around export. So having this metadata control file and making, uh, uh, you know, generating metadata. But we also want to support the idea of ingesting, uh, you know, taking an ISO document and transforming the ISO document into uh, a stack record or an OGC API record metadata. So there we need some import uh, mechanisms and facilities. And I think that'll be important as we, as we move and evolve to new metadata formats. Uh, and that that's, uh, I mean, that's in scope for this project to do as a future work item. I've left some links here. So we have the website and then we have the actual code. It's on GitHub. We also have a chat room. Um, I probably haven't touched on all the other projects that are using PyGeoMeta, but uh, those are a couple that at least I, um, I've, I'm aware of and uh, I'm involved in with Canadian Weather Service for the first one at least. So I thank you everybody for your time and um, time and interest and hope to uh, see some of you soon and thank you.
Nice. Thank you very much, Tom. Really interesting subject. Um, we have here a few questions. Um, let's start with this one. Do you plan to support QML, QGIS metadata format? If not, we could contribute. We'd be more than happy to have that contribution. Uh, so there is a code sprint tomorrow and we have our Gitter channel as well as our other communication mechanisms. So please don't hesitate to get in touch and let, let's talk about possibilities. Nice. The other one is about uh, if you have any plan to merge some work with the GeoCat bridge, bridge metadata Python library, which seems, uh, which, uh, which seems to use heavily XL uh, LT. Okay, so um, yeah, so the PyGeometa tool basically uses, uh, it does not use XSLT. It uses, uh, for XML, it uses Jinja 2 templates. Um, there's no reason, uh, we, we don't we don't mandate Jinja 2. In fact, for the, the JSON-based metadata, we don't use uh, Jinja 2 at all. So we just use the native Python JSON um, support. So there's no reason why we couldn't add additional formats which have XSLT as the engine uh, to do that. Okay, great. Could you share the, the links of your, um, um, could you share a link for to your presentation or those links that are in sure, the presentation? Sure. Let, let me just put it into the, uh, into the chat. Um, okay. Okay. So I just added it to the chat. Anybody with that link should be able to visual to see it. Great. And the last one, uh, is there a plan to super support Inspire metadata standard? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have that plan, but there's no reason we couldn't do it. We support a number of different uh, ISO based uh, standards. We support the vanilla one as well as the, uh, the we support the North American profile the harmonized North American profile, as well as the, uh, the WMO profile. So um, if folks want to see the Inspire metadata standard, then feel free to get in touch with uh, one of the mechanisms or, or our issue tracker or what have you. And contributions are welcome as well. OK, we are done with almost done with the time, but uh, the next speak, speaker didn't uh, present I think I see one more question. Um, yeah, yeah, we have here. I will share you the. Can you tell me if CS, CSWW and these metadata standards can be consumed by other kind of catalog services like those used by li librarians? That's a good question. I'm not exactly sure. I mean, there might be other others with uh, other metadata experts on the on the call here. That could uh, that could maybe share their experiences, but uh, I I I'd have to find out more about you know what what librarians use. I'm not really in tune with the library science community and their actual software and and what and what they've used. I've seen workflows going the other way, uh, so basically exporting from uh, from library systems, upstream library systems, and then uh, exporting them into you know pure geospatial metadata. But I'd have to, uh, I'd have to learn. I think we'd have to learn more about what the librarian workflows are for. See if we can see if we can integrate CSW or all the other geospatial catalog standards. Okay, okay. So I don't see any new questions. Thank you very much, um, Tom. I uh, hope to see you tomorrow in the code sprint. And Thank you. If you, if you want to say uh, if, uh, less words, be welcome. Thank you very much.